Greetings, motherfuckers, and welcome to this week's edition of 101 Facts. My name is Sam, and today we're looking at a tropical island with a rich and storied history, with every different flavour of environment you could possibly have, really. No, not the Isle of Wight. Maybe someday. We're talking Puerto Rico. But where in Puerto Rico would actually be a goth stream holiday destination? Where in Puerto Rico does the sea glow, and why? Also, is it true this channel has some kind of announcement to make in the coming weeks? Who could say? Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so let's visit somewhere that's part of the US but isn't a state. So it's not one of the main parts of the US, but it still has some US laws and is sort of governed by the US as well. Confusing, isn't it? But anyway, it pretty, so let's talk about it with 101 facts about Puerto Rico. Number one. Puerto Rico is a Caribbean island and an unincorporated territory of the United States of America. Now that means that Puerto Rico has fundamental rights that apply as law, however, other various constitutional rights don't apply. It's confusing, strap in. Number 2. Puerto Rico is an archipelago, meaning it's a group of islands. So I sort of lied just a second ago, sorry. The main three islands, Puerto Rico, which is confusingly named, Culebra and Viquez, are where the people live. The rest are pretty much uninhabited. Number three. Number three. Number three. Puerto Rico is the smallest island in the Greater Antilles, and it takes on an almost rectangular shape. Out of all the Greater Antilles islands, Puerto Rico is the farthest to the east, between the Dominican Republic and the US Virgin Islands. <laughs> no. Number four. Several languages are spoken in Puerto Rico, however, the main official languages are Spanish and English. Also, you can run into people who mix them both together in a language known as Spanglish. Number five. Despite English being a key language in Puerto Rico, only around 20% of its people can speak it fluently. This doesn't disregard the fact that most people can speak it, it's just that they can't speak it at an advanced level. Number 6. The population of Puerto Rico is around 3.3 million people, with the most dense populations being the city of San Juan and Bayamón. The majority follow Christian religions, with 70% of them being Roman Catholics. Number 7. Regarding ethnicity in Puerto Rico, approximately 80.5% are white folks with Spanish origin, 8% are black, 0.2% are Asian, and 10.9% are other. Mysterious. Number 8. The island was created by a volcanic eruption due to Puerto Rico lying on the boundary of the Caribbean and North American plates. As in the ones underground, not just, you know, dinner plates. So when those two plates shifted, it caused a massive earthquake, caused an eruption, and then formed the island. Number 9. Huge historical, uh, rascal? Christopher Columbus and his lieutenant Juan Ponce de Leon, <laughs> I mean, that is a funny name, founded the island on November the 19th, 1493. It was then under Spanish rule for over 400 years. Number 10. Columbus originally called Puerto Rico San Juan Batista, in honor of St. John the Baptist. San Juan Batista, no relation to Dave Batista, was renamed to Puerto Rico in 1521, which means rich port in Spanish, because of all the gold that could be found in its river and streams. Number 11. Before this, the local indigenous people, known as the Taino Indians, called Puerto Rico Bodican. This translates to Land of the Valiant and Noble Lord. Admittedly, the first one's snappier. Number 12. By the way, the remains of Juan Ponce de Leon, <laughs> I mean, it is a funny name, are still in Puerto Rico, resting inside a tomb in the San Juan Cathedral. Number 13. Anyway, during 1814, the Real Cedula de Gracias, a piece of legislation, not a person, opened Puerto Rico's economy to a variety of trades. This included lower tariffs and resulted in an increase in population and trade with the United States. Look at me talking about trade. What am I? A boring prequel to an otherwise beloved sci-fi saga? <laughs> Number 14. In 1890, William Seward, the former Secretary of State under President Lincoln, planned to purchase Puerto Rico and Cuba for $160 million from Spain. What an entirely reasonable goal. Although Spain rejected that offer and ended up losing Puerto Rico anyway in the Spanish-American War. Look at what you could have won, lads. Number 15. It was in 1898 when the Spanish gave up Puerto Rico to the US under the 1898 Treaty of Paris, which ended the Spanish-American War. Although it was only in 1917, a little over 100 years ago, when Puerto Rico became a US territory and its people became US citizens. Number 16. Weirdly, in 1898, the United States changed the island's name to Puerto Rico. However, in 1931, it was then changed back to Puerto Rico. Even though most people probably do say Puerto Rico, like the plebs we are. Number 17. Back while it was Puerto Rico in 1900, the island was put under something called the Faroca Act, meaning that all federal laws of the states existed on the island too. I had a bit of a warm-up, changing laws overnight. <laughs> it's not going to go well, is it? Number 18. 
After the United States defeated Spain in the Spanish-American War in 1917, Puerto Rico became an island within the territory of the United States. In case you were wondering, it has the status of Commonwealth, along with a legal and political status, but it's still below a state. But otherwise, mind your business. Number 19. To even further push America's control over the local power, the Olmsted Act was created, which gave the US president a direct role in decision-making in Puerto Rican affairs. Number 20. During 1917, the Jones Act was put in place to amend the Faroka Act by establishing triple tax exempt bonds. That means, by the way, that all bonds issued by the government of Puerto Rico shall be exempt from taxation. Number 21. During 1928, Puerto Rico suffered greatly during the Great Depression, something made way worse due to the following natural disasters, the San Felipe Second Hurricane in 1928 and the 1932 San Cyprian Hurricane. Very much a wind-based one-two punch there. Number 22, ooh. Following the disasters in 1933, the Puerto Rican Emergency Relief Administration was created to combat the destruction by the San Cyprian Hurricane that killed 257 people and injured over 4,820 of them. Number 23. On May the 28th, 1935, President Roosevelt contributed to the restoration of Puerto Rico by introducing the Puerto Rican Reconstruction Administration, or the PRRA. I know, lots of administrations going on here, but they seem to be pretty good. They provided agricultural development and supported the electrification of the island. As in, the power, not in like a, you know, electrified floor way. <laughs> Number 24. The first person to be the Puerto Rican governor was Jesus T. Pinheiro. He was elected- oh wait, no he wasn't elected. He was, in 1946, appointed by President Harry S. Truman, but under the promise that the people could actually vote on a governor two years later. Number 25. In 1950, Puerto Rico took on the name Estado Libre Asociado, which translates to Free Associated State. This is Puerto Rico's official Spanish name, by the way. Number 26. The currency used in Puerto Rico is the US dollar. Even though the US dollar has been the official currency for over a century now, one dollar is sometimes also referred to as a peso, like their old currency, and quarters as pesetas. Number 27. One of the benefits of the United States' influence over Puerto Rico is that US travelers do not need a passport to enter the island. So hey, if you're from Chicago or one of those other American places, there's a couple of them, leave your passport at home, buddy. Number 28. However, even though Puerto Ricans are US citizens, they can't vote in US presidential elections. You need to be in one of the 50 states to vote. Confusing? Yeah. Number 29. The largest shopping center in the Caribbean can be found in Puerto Rico. It's the Plaza Las Americas. Plaza Las Americas is also the first indoor shopping mall built in Puerto Rico, and it was established on the 3rd of September, 1968. Number 30. Plaza Las Americas is also one of the most profitable malls per square foot in the world, and opened the first Caribbean branch of Macy's. It even has a museum of reggaeton of all things inside, opened by Daddy Yankee himself. Puerto Rican musician. <laughs> that doesn't mean, you know, like the president of the US or something. Number 31. Even though Puerto Rico is an American territory, it competes as a separate nation in the Olympics. I mean, get it straight, guys. They've competed since 1948 and have won two gold, two silver, and six bronze medals during their Olympic history. Number 32. San Juan is home to the Bacardi Rum Factory, also known as the largest rum distillery in the world. They produce more than 100,000 litres of rum every single day, and even do rum tasting tours, and I've worked out what my next vacation is. It's Centre Park, not Puerto Rico. I don't like rum. Number 33. It's probably not a huge surprise, then, that the national drink of Puerto Rico is Pina Colada, and it was created in Old San Juan in 1954. The Puerto Rican bartender mixed a fruity blend of rum, coconut cream, and pineapple juice to make what we now know as a Pina Colada. Number 34. The San Juan Batista, full name the Cathedral Basilica Metropolitana de San Juan Batista, is one of the oldest cathedrals in the world. It began construction all the way back in the 1520s and was finished in 1540. The year, not, like, minutes, because otherwise that's fast. Number 35. San Juan is the home port for many cruise ships and is one of the busiest cruise ship ports in the world. Short, simple, to the point. Number 36. During the 1500s, the Catholic Church played a key role in Puerto Rico. In 1519, Pope Leo X declared Puerto Rico as the first ecclesiastical headquarters for the Spanish Church in the New World. Number 37. The national animal for Puerto Rico is the Coquis tree frog. The frog is native to the island and you'll most likely hear it during the late afternoon or at night time. A distinct feature it has when compared to other frogs is that it does not have webbed feet, nor is it married to a pig. Number 38. One of the most influential Puerto Rican politicians from the past is Luis Muñoz Marin, as he was governor for 16 years. That's four four-year terms, which is the longest time someone has served as a governor for. Number 39. 
The world's largest single-dish radio telescope is in the Arecibo Observatory, located in a town called Arecibo. That's in Puerto Rico, by the way. That's why I'm talking about it. It's been in use for around 55 years, but it sadly collapsed in 2020, like we all did. Number 40. Even though Puerto Ricans are American citizens, they can also receive Puerto Rican citizenship if they were born in Puerto Rico or if they've lived there for over a year. Number 41. Pirate Confresi is Puerto Rico's pirate version of Robin Hood, as he's a legendary pilot who gave his wins to the poor. He lived at some point between the 18th and 19th centuries, so the line between truth and myth is extremely blurry in his stories. The beginning of life. Even though World War II didn't take place in Puerto Rico, the US military fortified the island enough to be able to stand against an invasion. A lot of abandoned bunkers and military tanks are still there today. Number 43. To elaborate even further than that, around two-thirds of Puerto Rico acted as a US naval base for around 60 years. Since 2003, that land has become a number of wildlife reserves. Ah. Number 44. Both imperial and metric systems are used in Puerto Rico, which can make basic things a little bit more confusing. For example, distances are measured in kilometers, however the speed of many cars is measured in miles per hour. Huh? Number 45. There are 78 counties in Puerto Rico. The counties are known as municipios, and they are all functioning governmental entities with their own mayor. Number 46. Puerto Rico has also provided some incredibly talented folk. These include Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Antonio Award winning Rita Moreno, Jose Ferrer, Benicio del Toro, Raul Julia, Daddy Yankee, and Luis Guzman. Joaquin Phoenix was also born in Puerto Rico, which I think says a lot about society. Number 47. The king of Latin pop, also known as Ricky Martin, is from Puerto Rico. The famous singer, actor, and author has sold over 70 million albums worldwide and was born in the nation's capital, San Juan. Live in the vida, indeed, loca. Number 48. Festivals and celebrations regularly take place in Puerto Rico. One of the most popular is the Ibanito Flower Festival, where you can see huge floral displays, music, and events that push the beauty of a wide range of flowers. Number 49. The national flower for Puerto Rico is the Flor de Maga, also known as the hibiscus. It comes from the Malvasay family and can also be found in Florida, Hawaii, and most Caribbean islands. Number 50. Puerto Rico has the biggest pharmaceutical complex in the world in Barceloneta. One of the reasons for this is the water is so pure there it requires very little treatment in order to be used to manufacture pharmaceutical products. Number 51. If you don't know Barcelonita for that reason, you might know it for its famous black sand dunes. Must be a goth's favourite holiday destination, that. It's due to a high concentration of iron being within the sand. Number 52. On average, around 4 to 5 million people visit Puerto Rico's capital San Juan every year, which is more than the population of the entirety of Puerto Rico itself. Number 53. The national dish of Puerto Rico is arroz con gandules, and it's frequently eaten during different festivals. It's a rice dish made with gandules, otherwise known as pigeon peas, as well as green olives and sofrito, which is a sauce made of garlic, onions, tomatoes, and peppers cooked in olive oil. Number 54. Since Puerto Rico is a US territory and not a state, people who live there don't have to pay income tax unless they work for the US government. Number 55. Puerto Rico has won five Miss Universe titles so far, making it among the top countries to have the most Miss Universe winners. I think next year is Sidonius, I can feel it. Number 56. You may not have noticed, but Puerto Rico and Cuba's flags have identical colors. The only difference between the two is that the colors and triangle are reversed. Number 57. On Puerto Rico's seal is their motto, Johannes es nomen ejus. This is a quotation from the Vulgate of Luke in the Bible and means John is his name, referring to St. John the Baptist or San Juan Batista, the original Spanish name of the island. Number 58. Castillo San Felipe de Moro, also known as El Moro, is a citadel in San Juan that was built between the 16th and 18th centuries. It's named after King Philip II of Spain. Number 59. Inside El Moro Citadel is Castillo San Cristobal, which was built in 1765 as a fortress to guard the city of San Juan from approaching enemies. It covers over 27 acres, making it the largest fortress made by the Spaniards in the New World. Number 60. The fortress also has five enormous cisterns outside that were used to store water back in ye olden days. They're frickin' enormous at 24 foot tall and 57 foot long, but what's really cool about them is that they were used as bomb shelters during the Second World War. Number 61. Because of Castillo San Cristobal's rich history and grand structure, in addition to the more grand citadel of Castillo San Felipe del Moro, it was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983. Number 62. Another beautiful structure in Puerto Rico is the Governor's Mansion, which is known by two names, La Fortezela and El Palacio de Santa Catalina. 
It was built in 1540 and has housed more than 170 governors of Puerto Rico during its history. Number 63. Before La Fortezuela was a mansion, it lived up to its name, which is The Fortress. It was remodeled and converted to the governor's house for full-time use back in 1846, after several attacks on the building which caused damage, particularly those by the Earl of Cumberland in 1598 and the Dutch commander Boudouin Hendrik in 1625. Nintendo 64 There are multiple ceremonial plazas in the middle of the Caguana Indigenous Ceremonial Park in Utuado. It's a spot where important ceremonies, dance rituals and ball games took place for the Taino people. Number 65 now, the Taino people, as we mentioned earlier, were the indigenous people who lived in Puerto Rico before Christopher Columbus came along and, well, did his thing. As well as Puerto Rico, they also lived in Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and the Virgin Islands. Number 66. The Taino once had the highest population of indigenous peoples of the Caribbean, estimated to be up to 3 million people prior to the Spanish conquest. Not many survived the European invasion, but there are groups that strive for the restoration and affirmation of Taino culture, language, and religion. Number 67. Evidence of civilizations before them have also been found in the Centro Ceremonial Indigena de Tibes, or Tibes Indigenous Ceremonial Centre for us English-speaking folk, making it another important historic site in Puerto Rico. It has the largest indigenous cemetery discovered, with more than 186 human skeletons that date back to pre-Taino culture. Number 68. In order to control the population of reptiles and cane fields, Puerto Ricans imported mongoose, or mongoose, I guess, from India. Whatever they're called, they're reported to have caused more than $50 million worth of damage in Puerto Rico. Number 69. Uh, sea turtle. Speaking of reptiles, one of the largest living reptiles in the world was the leatherback sea turtle, which you can see on the Puerto Rican islands Viquez and Culebra. Number 70. In Puerto Rico, it's considered respectful to get close to someone and kiss them on the cheek during a conversation. Maybe avoid that at the moment, though, because, you know, virus and stuff. I'm sure they won't mind after... This is all gone. Number 71. Puerto Rico used to have a barkless dog. They were called the Jacibi, and like most other dogs, it was man's best friend. Other than the domesticated parrot, the Jacibi was the main pet of the Tainos. Sadly, they ceased to exist not long after the arrival of the Spanish. Number 72. One of the islands in Puerto Rico is the Isla de Mona, or Mona Island, which is known as the Galapagos of the Caribbean. The Mona iguana species native to the island are found nowhere else in the world. Number 73. In case it wasn't clear from the amount we've talked about it so far, San Juan is the capital of Puerto Rico. I probably should have mentioned that earlier, shouldn't I? Well, now you know. Number 74. There are over 300 beaches in Puerto Rico, and the coastline stretches on for around 270 to 300 miles in total. Basically, if the Proclaimers did just under two laps of Puerto Rico, they'd have achieved walking their 500 miles. Let's just forget the other 500 more. Number 75. The Discovery Channel has praised Puerto Rico for having one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Playa Flamenco, or Flamenco Beach, is found on Culebra, an island just to the east of the mainland of Puerto Rico. It's a great location for diving or snorkeling due to the lovely clear waters, and is often voted the best beach in Puerto Rico. Number 76. Another popular beach is Domez Beach, which is the perfect location for surfers as it has a range of constant waves, and is located on the northwest tip of Puerto Rico. It's also called Lighthouse Beach or Maria's Beach. You think there's somewhere with a Sam's Beach? Perhaps I could lay claim. Number 77. It's easy to fantasize about sipping a pina colada and a coconut on the beaches of Puerto Rico, but coconuts and palm trees aren't actually native to the place. They've been there so long and become so iconic, they might as well be. Number 78. The national tree for Puerto Rico is the Sabre Tree. It has a huge umbrella-shaped canopy and reaches heights of over 150 feet. That's approximately 24 and a half of me on top of each other. Which, you know, <laughs> what a party. Number 79. Puerto Rico's El Yunque is a national rainforest and is known for having the highest quality waters in Puerto Rico. Number 80. El Yunque gets its name from the Indian spirit Yukiu, which translates to the forest of clouds. Since its discovery as a national forest in 1876, it's been called one of the oldest reserves in the Western Hemisphere. Number 81. The Lukio Mountains in El Yunque rise to above 3,533 feet above sea level. Its steep slopes receive rainfall of over 200 inches, so it's wet and big, and that's all I'll say on the matter for now. Number 82. Eight major rivers in Puerto Rico originate from El Yunque, and for this reason it supplies water to 20% of the island's population. Furthermore, there are over 240 tree species and 150 fern species that can be found in El Yunque. Number 83. In El Yunque, it's known to rain frogs. Yep, you heard, rains frogs. 
When there's a high amount of humidity, the Koki frog climbs canopies up to 30 meters high in order to escape from predators. Then, instead of taking the normal way down, they launch themselves into the air and bypass their predators, so watch out for frogs. Number 84. Since Puerto Rico is an island, you can get there via both air and sea. There are around 1,300 non-stop weekly flights, as well as 1,000 direct ones. I'm not sure what the difference between those two is, but that's what travel experts say. Number 85. Puerto Rico has quite a tropical climate, with the coldest month being January, with temperatures of approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. The average high summer temperature is around 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 29 degrees Celsius. Basically, it's the perfect temperature all year round. None of this freezing grey British weather. Number 86. A number of animals that are nearly extinct can be found within Puerto Rico. The Puerto Rican parrot is in the top 10 most endangered species of birds in the world, and it can be found, yes, within Puerto Rico, in the upper zones of the Liquio Mountains. Number 87. Other endangered Puerto Rican animals include the Puerto Rican crested toad, various different subspecies of skink, and yes, that's not a typo, I did say skink, and lots of different frogs like the golden cookie, the stream cookie, the locust cookie, and the inada cookie, all of which can only be found in Puerto Rico. Number 88. The national bird of Puerto Rico is the Puerto Rican spindle. They are widely spread around the island and support the ecosystem by helping to disperse seeds and therefore helping in plant reproduction. Thanks, guys. Number 89. As there are over 18.8 miles of road and 24 miles of trail running or walking in the forest, it's a great place for both the adventurous and those just looking to enjoy the beauty of the rainforest. Just make sure you're wearing some comfy shoes. Number 90. In terms of size, Puerto Rico is 100 to 110 miles long, 35 miles wide, and in total covers 3,515 square miles. That's a bit smaller than Cyprus, which is, to compare it to something American, three times smaller than Rhode Island. Number 91. Cerro de Punta is the highest peak of Puerto Rico, at 1,338 metres above sea level. It's right on the borders of the municipalities of Jayuya and Ponce, and is part of the Toro Negro Forest Reserve. Apparently from this point you can see almost the whole island, including San Juan, which is 75 miles away. Number 92. Cavernas de Rio Camoy is the largest cave in the Western Hemisphere. With a size that stretches for over 286 acres, it's also the third largest cave in the world. Number 93. The Kamoi River, or Rio Kamoi, is the third largest underground river in the world. This river helped to shape the caverns and caves I just mentioned, and because of its incredible size, only a fraction of the caves have been fully mapped and discovered. Number 94. Rio de la Plata, or the Plata River, is the longest river in Puerto Rico at a whopping 46 miles, or 76 kilometers long. It's on the north coast of the island, flowing south to north, draining into the Atlantic Ocean. Number 95. Here's a new word for you today, bioluminescence. Simply put, bioluminescence is a light emitted by organisms, and the brightest bioluminescent in the world is at Mosquito Bay in Puerto Rico. The microscopic plankton organisms in the water react with a blue-green glowing light when touched. Number 96. Other than Mosquito Bay, Puerto Rico has two other bioluminescent bays, Cabezas de San Juan and La Paguera. So if one of them is crowded, just go to the other one. Number 97. The deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean is the Milwaukee Deep, which is around 8,380 meters deep and lies in the northwest of Puerto Rico in the Puerto Rican Trench. I don't want to think any more about it because the deep sea terrifies me. How do we not know what's down there? Number 98. If you thought the Statue of Liberty is huge, you're right, it is massive. But Puerto Rico is a statue of Christopher Columbus that's much taller, at 350 feet. The statue is called Birth of a New World. Eat that libs, as in the Statue of Liberty, not liberal people. Number 99. Several streets in Puerto Rico are paved with blue cobblestones called adequines. They were made from the use of waste, or slag, huh, that resulted from iron smelting. You can run into a number of beautiful streets like this in Puerto Rico. Number 100. Ponce, named after Columbus's Lieutenant Juan Ponce de Leon, is another major city in Puerto Rico. It's also known as La Perla del Sur, which means Pearl of the South. There's loads of government stuff there, including US federal government agencies. Number 101. If you've got a sweet tooth, you'll be glad to know that the most sugarcane plantations are found in Ponce. That's where to go if you want a bit of a sugar rush. As if listening to my sweet, sweet voice for these past 20-something minutes wasn't enough sweet for you. So those were 100 more facts about Puerto Rico. Are you watching from there? Have you been there before? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to One More Facts if you haven't done so already. And hey, one of these videos you're really going to enjoy, why not give it a click and see if I'm right. I'll see you there. Bye now.